Hello, welcome to Board Game Bonkers. I'm Jay Sears, and today we're going to talk about my top 10 board games that are overhyped, which I dislike. Now, we're going to get to battle here, but I want to be clear I don't think that these are terribly designed games. I just don't like them. So I want to be clear with this list that just because I dislike the games doesn't mean that you will dislike them. So I want you and I encourage you to at least try these games out if you haven't, so you can have your own opinion on whether you like these games or not. Now, before we dive into this list, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so for more content like this. We will be doing some more top 60s and top 10 lists, so don't miss out on those. Now, I want to be clear with this list that I'm not saying I think these are terribly designed games, although I could argue that one of them I think is slightly badly designed. I just don't like the games. In fact, I really dislike them. But that doesn't mean that you won't get enjoyment out of them. And you might enjoy some of these games. So I'm prepared for the keyboard warriors that will be bashing away with the disapproval that I've got their best favourite game on my list of what I dislike. And I think these games are well overhyped. And certainly at the time, there's a lot of classics in this list that at the time had been released were heavily overhyped. In fact, still are overhyped. And I think they are not a particularly great game. Certainly not a game I enjoy. So keep that in mind as we go through the list that just because I dislike it doesn't mean that you won't. This is subjective, just like a lot of lists that people put together and of, as always I try and look at things objectively which is why I've said from the start that I don't think they're terrible games I just don't like them and I don't want to play them again so I may give them a bit of a tough going I'm not going to go through an overview of each of these games I'm just going to quickly go through the list let's start off now with my number 10 and that is Forbidden Island. I'm going to give them each a, a score of what I rate them Board Game Geek if you're not familiar with Board Game Geek it's a list list is a website that lists lots and thousands of board games and you can rank them and you can give them a rating out of 10. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Now with Forbidden Island I've given this a 4.5. I just don't like it. It's a kind of tiling tile game. You'll be flicking tiles. The tiles will be um, sinking if I can remember right and put this a long time. will be disappearing and you're kind of firefighting them in a way. I just dislike this game. I just don't like it. It's not enjoyable for me. And sure, you've got that cooperative element to this where you're working together to try and get off the island before it sinks you into the abyss. But I just dislike this. I find it boring, quite frankly. And now this is from the same designer who designed Pandemic, which is a great game. I really enjoy that. This, no, don't like it. Really don't want to be playing that again. In fact, I can't even remember half of how the game functions because it's that forgettable for me. But you might like Forbidden Island, it just isn't a game for me. So let me move on to my number nine, and that is Splendor. I've given this a 4.5. Now, Splendor isn't a bad game. Essentially, it's a card game, you've got cards laid out, and you've got these uh, you know, gem tokens, you're trying to gather the different gems and cards. I just think it was okay at the best. It just wasn't that engrossing for me. It's pretty boring. I was kind of felt like I was doing the same thing. It is a light game, and perhaps I really need to play this again. And I played this a number of years ago, so I can't really remember the gameplay. And I think I need to try it again, perhaps, and just see whether I still feel the same way. Now I've played hundreds of other games since then. So it's a game I'll probably go back to just to try it again and see whether my thoughts will change in it now that I played many more board games it just wasn't for me it was pretty boring if I can remember right it wasn't that engrossed at the time I tried it so let's move on to my number eight and this one is not so much over height but it's only popular with this design and that's BIOS Origins I've given this a four out of ten I really disliked this game and the reason why I just felt it was broken in a lot of places and I felt that the function of the game wasn't quite right because you've got this civilization game and you've got this main map board, which looks lovely. But except you can just dismiss that and not use it and just go up these tracks because that's how you earn your points. It just felt broken. It just felt something wasn't quite right. 
Now, you're collecting these cards, you're trying to action these cards, and you've got this kind of banner, and you're trying to action them, um, and you're carrying out these, these different actions to then do different things, go up tracks, and then populate the board. Although, when you're populating the board with these urbanization, the buildings, they tend to get knocked over and destroyed due to the events that happen, which makes it pointless because then they go back in the tracks, so you've lost the points. But there's other tracks. I like the way the scoring worked. It was quite unique and a little bit different because you're combining the uh, different sections and then there's two or three tracks in each section and then you look at the scoring and then you get the average. So I quite like the way that worked, but the game I felt was broken. It was extremely convoluted in what you were doing. And I felt that it could have been streamlined and that's a problem with a lot of the complex games, especially the more modern ones that are over conflict, over bloated, in my opinion. I like the theme of this, just didn't like the execution, it wasn't a game for me. I did a review of this and I did slate it a bit because I felt it was broken in a few ways. Now let's move on to our number seven. This may shock a few people. This is The Crew. Now I've given this a 3.5 out of 10. Really don't like this. I'm not a fan of trick taking games in general, and I really didn't get this. I was, I just, for some reason, I knew what cards people had. I could just remember what they had. I knew what they had. I could work it out. It just felt flat. Now, sure, you can play this cooperatively and you're working together, but I just, I just didn't get it. I just didn't understand what was so good about this game. It was so overhyped. And when I played it, and I was uninspired, I just felt that it was flat. It was boring downright boring, uninteresting, and I could work out what cards people had, what they were likely to play, it just it just wasn't good. Did not enjoy this game, really disliked it, really disliked it. Let's now move on to my number six, and this might surprise a few people, it's a classic now, this is Seven Wonders, uh, given this a 3.5 out of 10, do not like this, I really dislike it. Now I love Seven Wonders Duel, I think that's a far superior game, but Seven Wonders is downright boring, I didn't like it. Yes, you've got some drafting, drafting of cards, you're trying to build these wonders. I just didn't like the synergy, and I just didn't like the flow of the play in this, it just felt a little bit dull and boring for me. Seven Wonders Duel was, is much more exciting, much more tension involved, I just much prefer it. That would be my pick over Seven Wonders, but you might enjoy it. You might be one of these people who love these classic games, and that's fine. It just isn't for me, and I really don't want to be playing this ever again. Now, let's move on to my number five. And again, this is a classic, quite a complex game. This is Puerto Rico, and I've given this a 3.5 out of 10. Didn't like it. The thing that bothered me, you've got these different roles, and then you can at the actions using the particular type of roles. Everyone's got access to these roles. There's a lot to kind of take in in terms of the different roles and what they do. And I just felt it was a little bit over convoluted in what it was doing, a little bit confusing at times. But once you've obviously played it a few times, it doesn't make sense. I just didn't like it. I really did, didn't like it. I kind of got the sense of I want my own role. I want my player to do my ability and no one else can do that. So everyone's sharing these roles. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. You're gathering goods, etc., and exchanging. I just didn't like it. Now, that might be because I played the digital version, not the board version, perhaps. But I really don't want to be playing this again. I really had a bad feel. It just didn't engross me and engage me in the gameplay. In fact, I played half the game and shut it off because it was damn really boring. I tried to go back to it to play it again, and it was the same feeling. I just disliked it. I just didn't like it. So let's move on to my number four. And I think this will surprise a lot of people. This is a family weight classic game, Ticket to Ride. I've given this a 3.5 out of 10. I don't like this. This is boring. Oh my goodness. I dislike games to do with trains in general. It's dull for me. It's not a theme that I'm engrossed by. You're building these networks. You've got these cards. You're trying to get, build these networks from station to station, but people can kind of cut you off and use that, the, um, that trail with their own PCs, you're just building these, these routes. It's boring. I just don't like it. It's uninspiring. It's not a game I want to get my children to play either. It's play a card, get a card, play a card, build a track, play a card, build a track. Boring. Rinse, repeat. You can say that with a lot of games, but this is very basic, uninteresting for me. 
just don't like it. Dull. All right, which paint dry. So let's now move in to my next one, my number three. This is another classic. This is Catan. And I've given this a 3.5 out of 10. Oh my goodness. It feels like somebody's played Monopoly, decided to change quite a lot, and believe me, it's better than Monopoly, and then decided we'll have negotiation. Then we'll put, put this little piece in that's going to steal goods from you just to annoy you. And then we can have negotiation that you don't want to negotiate with because that happens all the time. Nobody ever wants to negotiate or exchange goods or swap things. So you're essentially just doing your own thing and building this kind of little, little world. And you're building these routes, these houses. You're kind of trying to create this little world, gathering goods, exchanging goods for points. It's a little bit flat for me. It just wasn't, I just couldn't get my head around why people liked it so much. I could understand it was one of those games, Pithful Games, came out in 1995, that really changed the way board gaming works. So I understand that and appreciate it for that. I just don't like it. It's boring. I really didn't like it. Perhaps the 3.5 out of 10 is a bit harsh, but I just don't get it. It just, it just feels dated. I rather much prefer playing some of these more modern games than Catan any time of the day. I feel like I played a poor man's version of Monopoly at, some, at some one point. That would be a bit harsh, okay? And I'll get the keyboard warriors coming and bashing away that will probably love this game. I just don't like it. I really dislike this game. Let's move into my number two, and that is Carcassonne. I've given this a 3.5 out of 10. Don't like tiling games in general, and I don't like this. You're building this route, it's random, so you don't know what tiles are coming out, you're placing the tiles down, and you're getting points depending on what you've connected, what tiles you've connected. Boring. And obviously you get your little meeple, you're placing on it, it's going to give you more points. I just don't like this. I really, really dislike this game. Boring. I don't like titling games in general. It's not a thing for me. I just find this dull. I really did. Sure, you might like this, and you might that might be your kind of thing if you enjoy games like this and King Domino, etc. But I, I just don't like those types of games. That's why I've ranked it so low in terms of my scoring. So let's now move in to my number one. And what I consider is probably the most hyped game that I dislike, and that is Spirit Island. I've given this a 3.5 out of 10. I really dislike this. I remember playing this, and I was given... The faction, one of the basic factions, I was bored. I was, wasn't was cooperative working together. So you're meant to be these spirits. You're scaring people off the island. I felt like somebody had played Monopoly and stolen the Monopoly pieces, stuck them in this big game board, that is the houses. It's, it's very clunky. It is over procedural in terms of the end of the round. You've got all these procedures to go through, and it felt clunky. I just felt that they could have streamlined this game much more. Now, the actions you take is quite fascinating, and it can be a little bit confusing with your factions, depending on which one, which spirit you take. But the problem was, the basic ones, the introductory ones, are so damn right dull, that I'm sitting there doing my own thing for 90% of the game, and only twice that I interact. So that cooperative element was very much non-existent, because you're starting on your side of the board, so you don't really need one another to be able to work together for at least halfway through the game. That's a problem for me. I don't like the artwork that much. It's just okay. It's fiddly, all the little pieces I'm putting out. I just didn't like it. I really, really dislike this game. I don't want to play it again. Now, do I think these games are terrible? Do I think that they're badly designed? No. I actually think they're well designed for the majority of them. Apart from Bias Origins, I think it's broken. But... I think there's a lot of effort has gone into the design of some of these games. I think some of these games are over convoluted. Spirit Island, I think it's over bloated for what it needs to be. They could have streamlined this and made this much more fun instead of putting all these bloody steps in place to resolve. I feel that they could have been more exciting than some of the games. Now, perhaps you're someone who loves tiling games. That's fine. Great. Fantastic. You might enjoy um, the, the what, some of these games. I just don't. Perhaps you're someone that likes deep strategy and you might enjoy Spirit Island or Bias Origins. I just don't like these games. And that's okay because we all have different preferences. And I've come to realise as I've designed games, as I've played more games, what I like and what I dislike. And it's taken me a couple of hundred games to get through to realise what I do enjoy. 
and what I don't enjoy. But my mind has changed in certain games that use specific mechanisms that I used to dislike and hate, and now I actually enjoy them. And I will do a separate video on that. But for these games that are overhyped, and they were overhyped at the time, some are still overhyped, I just don't enjoy them. I don't like them. I don't want to play them again, with the exception of Splendor, because I want to try that again and see if I can change my mind. But in all honesty, the vast majority of these, I don't want to see them again. And that's fine. You might feel different. But let me know in the comments down below. Do you disagree with this list? Do you love any of these games and enjoy them? And that's fine. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jay Sears. Until next time, take care.